if you like working with wood, we got some tools for you. Check out a new way to get supersized joints from Festool, a saw guide that protects your digits, and a portable router table that snaps together quick. It's that simple. Plus, ever heard of a shoot board plane? You can get a definition and crispness you just can't get any other way. You're not gonna believe how hot it's gotta get to make them. We got stuff to square your edges, shape your wood, and sharpen your tools. Plus, preserving traditions in woodcraft. Because we learned how to make furniture from renovating antiques. And you can enroll to learn from the masters at Thomas Bozier. Woodworkers, listen up. This show's for you. Hey, I'm Chris Grundy. Ever see a woodworker do this? What they're doing is showing you they still got 10 fingers. And the micro jig gripper is gonna help keep it that way. You just hold this and feed the stock through the saw. You've got a nice firm grasp and your digits stay far away from the danger zone. When you're ripping through lumber on your table saw, you gotta keep your fingers safe from the blade. You could use a push stick, but there's not much control or protection. You're just pushing along. It's hard to get pressure on the top. It's hard to get pressure on the sides. Your fingers are exposed to the blades. But Micro Jig's got a tool called the gripper that brings control and safety to the table saw. Your hand is protected. You don't have to worry about any blades hitting you. It's just a much easier, safer way to make these really narrow cuts. The gripper is a fully adjustable push block that shields your fingers while three non-slip legs guide your project past the blade. The three rubber grips are great because you can get pressure downward to the side and then forward. Slide the center leg in to make thin cuts for trim and edging, or make it wide and the gripper clears the blade for bevel cuts. The longer stock, use two grippers, hand over hand, leapfrog style. You can push your first one through, grab another, and then finish that cut easily. So if you want more safety and control at the table saw, check out the gripper from Micro Jig. When you're joining large pieces of wood, the larger the tendon, the stronger the joint. I want these boards to line up top to top. I also want them to line up end to end, and a joint needs to be very strong. Best Tool has taken its renowned domino and made it bigger. The Domino XL drills deeper mortises for supersized domino tenons. Five and a half inches of solid beech wood. At this thickness, this length gives me a very, very strong joint. This thing will take a lot to tear apart. The wood will probably break before the domino does. The domino has side-to-side -side pendulum cut in action with two settings, tight fit or slightly wider for floating tenons. It allows it to have space to move so that it makes for easier assembly. Spring-loaded stop pins help space the end mortises exactly the same on each board. There's an adjustable cross-stop accessory for more spacing options. This pin now can go into this mortise Use the same spacing along the opposite board for a perfect matchup. Fit it all together and two pieces of wood become one. This is one strong board now. Festool's Domino XL is a supersized joiner for supersized projects. Cause deeper holes with bigger tenons are gonna give you stronger joints. And if you're like me, you love tools with all the bells and whistles, like this one from Skill. It's a router table with lots of helpful features. It's got a quick clamp mounting system. Goes in real quick in seconds. You just line it up, and then you just pop it in. It's that simple. The top of your table and your fence are made of MDF, so this stays nice and smooth. It helps your wood go right across there without any glitches. Adjustable feather boards are great for stabilizing and guiding your workpiece. If you want to adjust the bit height, no problem. You get your bit height gauge, slap that joint on there. If you want to adjust it, no problem. Spin it down. And of course, you gotta think about safety. You got your gravity guard right here. It's gonna keep your fingers safe, and also it's gonna keep that dust from jumping out at you. I'm ready to route, baby. It gets the job done, but that ain't all. Check out the onboard storage. So you can put your accessories in here, whatever you want. Boom, pretty cool. And when you're done for the day,
shore up your legs, pop them in place, boom. And now, it's ready to go on a shelf. It packs up small, but the skill router table is ready for action again whenever you are. You got dinged up chisels that look like this. Most times, you know, you're either gonna pay to have that sharpened or you throw the tool out and go buy yourself a new one. Time to give that chisel a revival with Grizzly's 10-inch wet grinder. It's got all sorts of jigs to sharpen just about any tool. You start by mounting the chisel jig. This machine comes with a handy little guide and we got lots of different things we can sharpen here. And right here is our, our soft wood chisel at 20 degrees. So now that we have our angle set, and then try to make this chisel new again. Time to give that chisel a revival with Grizzly's 10-inch wet grinder. After a few minutes on the grinder, our edge is good as new. It's got all sorts of jigs to sharpen just about any tool. The final pass on the honing wheel gives the knife a razor sharp edge. There's also a jig for axes. It's getting a pretty good edge on that. So the next time you got an axe to grind, or a knife, or a chisel, Grizzly's 10-inch wet grinder can give you the edge. Coming up, forget the scrap shims. With this gadget, anything in your vise stays put. And shooting the perfect edge and a high-end specialty tool. They crank up the heat to make them at a foundry in Maine. 3,000 pounds of molten iron in here. All to make the Lee Nielsen number 51 shoot board plane. You can't make the best if you don't have the right tools. Next. If there's one thing woodworkers all agree on, it's that your projects don't always stay clamped in your vise. This wood has a, has a strange angle, and it's pretty loose in, in the vise, and I really can't get it secure. Shims don't always fit the job either. But now there's a tool to help you clamp the unclampable. It's called the gyro jaw. Just crank it into your vise between the jaws and the wood, and your project stays in place, solid and tight. It's made of a tough nylon and glass fiber combination with just enough give to make it non-slip. I'm not worried about it coming loose in the vise so I can really worry about the details. There's a handy channel that grabs onto round surfaces and a steel stud that pivots to any angle. The objects on either sanding or drilling are secure in the vise. That's the gyro jaw getting it done in the workshop. There are tools that every woodworker needs, and then there's the luxury tools they just want. This here is in the second category. It's Lee Nielsen's number 51 shoot board plane. It's a beautiful heirloom tool for shooting an edge. And by that, I mean trimming and squaring edges and ends. It's not essential, but it makes perfection just a little easier. The guys at Lee Nielsen show us how it works and how it's made, too. Everybody knows you need the best to make the best. And when it comes to fine woodwork, that means Lee Nielsen's number 51 shoot board plane. It's a specialized tool that runs back and forth on a track called a shooting board. So it's perfect for making furniture with fine joints or bevels and when you need to get ultra smooth cuts across the end grain. You can get a definition and crispness to a surface and material that you just can't get any other way. You can't get it with sandpaper. You can't get it off of a milling machine. The angled blade and rock solid construction helps you shave cleanly through hard to cut edges. You're gonna get actual shavings from the end grain cut. The number 51 weighs a hefty nine pounds and that mass helps it perform better than some power tools. In many cases they're faster than power tools. There's no dust, there's no noise. At their factory in Warren, Maine, Lee Nielsen makes more than 100 woodworking tools. For the number 51 shoot board plane, every knob, blade, and rivet is made by hand the old-fashioned way. The first step begins at a foundry about an hour from the Lee Nielsen facility. It takes a whole lot of heat to shape metal. This is the furnace at Enterprise Foundry. 
3,000 pounds of molten iron in here. The molten iron is 2,800 degrees as it's poured off and rolled out to the casting station. Then, the casting molds are stamped into sand. This is kind of the cool part, because it's going to take the jacket away, and that sand is going to stay there all by itself, because it's compacted. Each mold gets filled with red-hot iron and cooled. Then, they knock off the sand to reveal the body. Back at the Lee Nielsen factory, Metal Parts take a trip to the CNC mill, where a robot cutter forms the blade slot and taps holes for the handle and adjusters. Bronze blade supports, or frogs, are machined on another mill, while the caps that hold the blade down get a rivet and a spring. Next come the handles, and they don't use plastic here. We start with a blank of cherry. All the parts meet up at the assembly station. And they will take those tools, inspect them, put on the various parts, handles, knobs, frogs, blades, and deliver them to the wrapping station. Everything about this tool is handmade, right down to the box it comes in. And after a final polish and inspection, the Lee Nielsen number 51 shoot board plane gets packed up and ready to ship. I think it looks really nice with the logo. At $500, this luxury tool is not for everybody. But if you've got to have the best, no woodworker's collection is complete without a Lee Nielsen number 51 on the workbench. Still ahead, getting a solid grip on a cordless orbital sander. This rubber is really easy to hold on to. A mini lathe that does a whole lot more than shape wood. It really gives you a complete shop in one. And box clamps for perfect square joints. New stuff for woodworkers, next. When you need to get some sanding done outside the shop, this new 18-volt sander from Ryobi offers a cool cordless solution. For starters, check out the grip right on the tool body. This rubber is really easy to hold on to, and uh, I'm not fighting it. It just fits pretty good. When sanding, you're not going to get any obvious swirls. That's because it works in a random pattern with 10,000 orbits a minute. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. I mean, it's already taken off this paint, which I thought would be pretty caked on here, so it's, uh, it's working good. Power comes from the 18-volt OnePlus battery system. Any NICAD or lithium battery from your other Ryobi tools are compatible with this one. It's a powerful sander for almost any application. And when it's time to change sandpaper, there's nothing to it. It's got this uh, hook and loop system, and you just pull it off, put another one on, and off you go. The Ryobi 18-volt random orbital sander is one versatile tool. Lightweight and cordless, so it goes wherever your work takes you, inside or out. If you're going to invest in woodworking tools, it's nice if they can do more than one thing. This lathe from Technotools is a good example. The Nova Comet 2 MIDI lathe is pretty small, but you can turn a bowl and make all kinds of shapes with it too. And that's not all. You get yourself some attachments, and you can sharpen your chisel, and a lot of other cool stuff too. <laughs> yeah! Get some! It takes a specialized tool to tackle some wood projects. In order to make this, I'm just hollowing out the inside of this natural edge bowl. You're going to need one of these. Nova's Comet 2 is a mid-sized lathe, perfect for turning bowls or shaping anything from wood to resin. The lathe turns these colorful resin blocks into artistic pens. The kind of projects that you can do on this lathe are not much different than you can do on a full-size lathe. You can do anything from pens, you can do bowls. But shaping is only the beginning. Couple it with Nova's VersaTurn accessories, and the Comet 2 can handle all kinds of other jobs. I've got the grinder already on here. I don't even have to turn the machine off. So it's got the grinder, a wire brush, and a disc sander. It 
it really gives you a complete shop in one. It gives what I've got in five different places in my shop in one spot. So if you don't have a lot of space in your workshop, the Nova Comet 2 MIDI lathe is a good bet. It's portable, powerful, and with all those accessories, really versatile too. Regular bar clamps can fall short when your project calls for square joints. That's where these come in. These are Woodpecker's box clamps. They're handy corner clamps that make joints perfectly square. Place the clamp on the joint and twist the knob to tighten the wedge. They're fully adjustable also, so it's not just for three quarter inch stock. You can loosen up the back wedge, shift it in and out, all the way down to a quarter of an inch, all the way back to a full inch in thickness. The knobs are removable, so the clamp lies flat for tabletop projects. So if you need to build shelves or boxes, Woodpecker's box clamps gives your joints a perfect square. Up next, preserving traditions at Thomas Moser Cabinet Makers. It's more than furniture. You want to call it three-dimensional art, that's what it is. You can buy the furniture or learn how to make it yourself. Creating an heirloom next. This is a beautiful piece of furniture. What would you say if I told you you could make this yourself? But you can with a little bit of help from the furniture making folks at Thomas Mosier. You can buy a chair like this, or you can make one at the family owned business in Maine. We paid them a visit to see how it works. At Thomas Mosier Cabinet Makers, wood takes on an artistic form and provides function that lasts a lifetime. It will survive easily 300 years because we learned how to make furniture from renovating antiques. The designs are simple and elegant, focused mostly on joinery. Both traditional and modern styles are crafted from the finest woods. This would be uh, a New Gloucester rocker made entirely out of ash. Tom Moser started the business 40 years ago, leaving his job as a college professor to focus on what had been only a hobby. It was a family operation. So it started sort of as a way of reacquainting ourselves with old techniques and old technology. Upholding tradition is still a source of pride today. We are craftsmen, we're not furniture makers. We manipulate, design wood. The family-run shop preserves antique quality, but the process includes up-to-date tools and machines. This is our panel clamp. This is where we lay up all of our panels. Boards are carefully matched, glued, and clamped together under 350 pounds of pressure. Bending wood is done several ways, but one of the most stable is stacked lamination. That calls for heat from this machine. Now this radio frequency machine is, is like a large microwave oven. A after the resin is allowed to set up, there's no way that that skirt will ever bend, twist, bow, cup. It'll never move, it'll always stay stable. Another form of bending relies on air pressure, clamps, and jigs. This machine is as old as the chair design itself. These two jigs probably go back to the early 1970s. This is the way that we make our trade dressed continuous armchair. You'll see plenty of modern machines in the shop, but Thomas Moser Furniture wouldn't be what it is without good old handwork. It's through the celebration of traditional joinery that will ensure that this furniture will survive for multi-generations. You can buy custom-made Thomas Moser furniture, but you can also learn to make it yourself. Traditional techniques are taught during a customer in-residence program. We started the program in the fall of 2007, and since then we've had 158 people who've come from 35 different states. For one week, each participant works with one of Moser's master cabinet makers. The screw just keeps it from lifting up. Yeah. We are building a five drawer shaker dresser for one of the grandchildren or children. I'm sure of that. The customer actually buys the piece and then pays extra to learn how to build it. They could just have us build it and it would be less expensive, but they're coming for more than that. It's sort of like summer camp for woodworking enthusiasts. 
I'm working on uh, the Pasadena dining room table. This is a stand-up height lectern desk. I've been copying Tom Mosier for about 20 years. It's just an incredible privilege for a hobby woodworker to be up here working with these guys. They are true pros. Students have different levels of experience, but what brings them here is usually the same. There are so few things today that we do that we pass on to our children and they pass on to their children. And I think that this idea of putting self into the piece, I think that has a great deal to do with the success. When the program is over, students take home a sense of accomplishment and a beautiful family heirloom. It's more than furniture. You want to call it connoisseurship, you want to call it three-dimensional art. I mean, that's what it is. You make a chair like this, now you got something to show for your vacation. You can learn more about Thomas Mosier or any of the things you've seen today by going to our website at DIYNetwork.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.